So we're now ready to raise the tower. And just want to mention, we're raising the tower without the turbine on top. This is called our test run. So we're finally ready to attach the end of our winch to the end of our gin pole and begin to raise our gin pole and tower. And in order to do that, we'll push our lever here into the neutral mode and we'll pull out slack. So our final gin pole setup, as you can see, we have our lifter wires attached one through four, lowest to highest in order here on our bottom shackle. We wanna make sure that's tight. On the side here, we have our two safety wires to keep the gin pole level in when it's in a vertical motion. And we also have our actual winch anchor point attached to the back side of our rocker plate here, which is what's gonna pull the gin pole up to a vertical position. So before we raise our tower, we're just going to kind of do a quick walkthrough and make sure that all of our bolts are tight, make sure that our flanges are completely compressed, make sure our guy wires are nice and in order. So when raising the tower, it's really important to have about three people on site. Two people will be on the side guys checking the tightness of each. When the tower raises, it tends to really pull those tight, those side guys extremely tight and if they get too tight they might break and the tower may fall. So throughout the raising we'll raise in about 10 degree increments, we'll stop, we'll take a visual inspection of the anchors and actually go over and shake the slack to see how much of slack is in the guy wires and then raise another 10 degrees and then another 10 degrees until our tower is vertical. How's it looking? It's still leaning uphill a little bit. Alright, we need to move a little bit. When you reach the last five degrees of raising your tower, it's really important that you monitor your back guy wires. Now, you should have been pulling slack out of your back guys and slowly letting the tower reach its vertical position. When you get to about 85 degrees, it's best to actually physically come up to the back guys to check tension. As you can see here, the tension on our back guys is too much. So we'll have to let some slack out. If we were to keep pulling the tower to a 90 degree vertical position, you run the risk of actually snapping your back guys because they're too tight. So what we're gonna do is set up a transit and see how straight the tower is and adjust these back guys to get it in a vertical 90 degree position. So like Sebastian mentioned, we're here with our transit. We've set it up in line with our side guy wires looking at the tower to, to tell how plumb it is or how level it is in a vertical position. So we start off by leveling the transit. Then I can look at the base of the tower and I'm going to set my crosshairs onto the edge of the tower, tighten down this screw, which doesn't allow it to move horizontally anymore. And then I'm going to use this screw to make fine adjustments to get those crosshairs right on the edge. All right, so we're locked in on the edge of the tower. Now I'm gonna move up the tower and make notes of uh, which sections of the tower are out of plumb. So I can see that at the 20 foot guy wire level, we're just a little bit off center past vertical. And the tower continues to move in that direction. So. 
we see that we're gonna have to pull in some slack on our rear guy wires to pull the tower back into a vertical position. So in a situation where you don't have a transit, you can use what's called a plumb bob, which is basically just a weight on the bottom of a string. So I'm gonna set myself up just like I would with the transit um, in line with our side guy wires. And I'm just gonna hold that plumb bob up, stabilize it at the bottom, and then let it go. So it's, it's gonna pull that string level to the ground. I'm gonna hold it up in line with the tower. And just like the transit, I can line it up with the base and see that our tower is just a little bit past vertical. So we're gonna to need to pull in a little bit of slack on those rear guy wires to level it up. All right, so using our transit or our plumb bob, we realized that we raised our tower just a little bit past plumb, past 90 degrees. So we've lowered the tower back down a little bit, and now we're gonna pull in a little bit of slack on these rear, rear guy lines. Um, just a little bit of slack on the guy wire will make a big difference on the tower. So we're gonna pull in about an inch of slack and uh, we're keeping in mind that we wanna overcompensate just a tiny bit so that when we get that tower up into a vertical position, um, we can let slack out when we've set our final guy wire positions rather than trying to pull slack in. It's always better to, to overcompensate a little bit on the uphill side so you're letting the tower out into your final position. So as you can see, Sebastian's pulled in about an inch of slack, and now we're gonna do the same thing for the other three guy wires, working from the top down to the bottom guy wire position. All right, so we've pulled in some slack on our rear guy wires, um, keeping in mind that we wanted to overcompensate just a little bit so that tower is leaning just a little bit to the uphill side. So we're gonna come back to our transit, which we haven't moved at all. Um, gonna get it lined up, put our crosshairs on the bottom of the base and use our, our fine adjustment. Get that right on line and then work our way up the tower. And it's looking good right at the 75 foot guy wire level. We're just a tiny bit on the uphill side of plumb. And that's exactly where we want it to be. So now we can transfer over our guy wires when we're ready, after we've got the turbine installed, um, get our final installation set up, and then let out just a little bit of slack on that uphill guy wire side to get the, the tower perfectly plumbed. 